In Jesus' name, we pray. All the love of the Lord say, Amen. Yeah. 
24 through 25. Go ahead, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, Y'all started something. Ah, that's a good place, man. Verses 24 through 25 from the NIV. Amen. Several days later, Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, who was a Jewess. He sent for Paul and listened to him as he spoke about faith in Christ Jesus. As Paul discoursed on righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was afraid and said, that's enough for now. You may leave. When I find it convenient, I will sin for you. One translation of that verse says, I'll possibly take this matter up with you on tomorrow, but not today. I want to talk about the danger of a tomorrow salvation. Well, right, Amen. You may be All seated. Right, I solicit your prayers. The danger, danger. of a tomorrow salvation. Yeah, yeah. Most of us 
became familiar with the word or term salvation when we were children. Webster defines salvation as deliverance or being rescued from that which is unpleasant, from that which is possibly even life-threatening. Mm -hmm. Those of us in the Christian realm are highly aware and acutely conscious of the importance of salvation. All right. Right. You cannot buy it, right. or the rich will live and the poor will die. Yeah. Salvation, as we know it, is the free gift that comes from the Lord. Yes, sir. You understand, Satan pays wages, but the Lord gives gifts. The Bible says in Romans 6 and 23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. In other words, we did not earn it. We could not pay for it. In fact, if we could afford it, we could not afford it for it was if it was for sale. Mm -hmm. Salvation is a gift that God freely gives to those who would believe. Mm -hmm. I believe that I stand amid people who are familiar on a personal level with salvation. Yes, I believe today in this place that I am surrounded in those at home who are the recipients of God's divine salvation. Right, right. I submit to you that when you have been saved, you have a new way of walking. All right, right. When you have been saved, you have a new way of talking. Right, right. Scripture tells us that old things oh, are passed away. Right. And old things become new. Mm -hmm. But many people are still lost because they feel that while salvation is available to them, they have until tomorrow to come to know the Lord. Yeah. Right. At the time of our text, Paul had been brought before Marcus Antonius Felix. He had already testified to Felix of the false accusations that had been raised against him. Paul had been accused by Ananias the high priest and the elders of stirring up trouble in the synagogues and among the people. Tertullius had charged Paul with being an insurrectionist a traitor, a troublemaker. Mm -hmm. He accused Paul of being a ringleader of the Nazarenes mm -hmm. who were a rebellious sect. Mm -hmm. Paul was further accused of profaning the temple. Even though he had done no one wrong, we find Paul in prison in Caesarea. Well, what was the real reason that Paul was in jail? Hmm. Paul was in jail for preaching Christ yes, and Christ crucified. Wow. He did not stop at the tomb, but he also preached Christ resurrected. Right. My brothers and sisters, when we talk about Jesus, when we talk about how they did him, we cannot leave him in the grave, well, for he is not there. Not there. That's why so many black Baptist preachers all over this country this morning we end our message by saying that early, early, early. on the third day morning, yes, he got up yes, with all power. 
in his hand. So here was Paul in jail for preaching on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Although Paul was in prison, the fame of this renowned proclaimer of the unsearchable riches of the kingdom has spread far and wide. People had heard about this dynamic preacher who preached jailhouse sermons, mm. started the first prison ministry. Mm. Right. You remember that God asking Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? Wow, wow, wow. They had heard how he would not even let the death of Eutychus in Troas stop him from preaching. Oh, so the news of the Apostle Paul reached the ears of the prestigious and the prominent members of the higher echelon wanted to see him. Mm -hmm. Felix was governor of Judea. He had originally been a slave, but along with his brother Paulus, had been highly favored by Emperor Claudius. Subsequently, he was freed by the mother of Claudius and was able to secure his position as governor of Judea. Yeah. Felix was a monstrous ruler, cruel and lustful, full of greed, full of corruption. Taxitus, the great Roman historian and politician, says that with all cruelty and lust, he exercised the power of a king with the spirit of a slave. In Felix, we see the picture of a man who knew better, but still went on and pursued his own cravings and pleasures. When it comes to doing things we should not do, most of us already know better. Somebody ought to help me here. I say we already know better. Verse 22 tells us that he was well acquainted with the way, but he postponed justice. In other words, Felix knew more about Christianity than the prosecutors and the religionists thought that he knew. He had a more perfect knowledge, a more accurate knowledge of Christianity than anyone supposed. He knew enough about Christian believers, their message of righteousness, to know that Paul was telling the truth. Yet he postponed justice. Right. Yeah. He did not do the right thing. He knew that Paul should be set free. But he lacked the backbone. Mm -hmm. He lacked the courage to do it. Now there are several reasons why he did not set Paul free. First, Felix could not risk upsetting the Jewish authorities too much. If he let Paul go, they might report him to Caesar, which could have resulted in him being removed from office. Right. Secondly, Nero had just assumed power in Rome. Felix's brother Paulus no longer carried the influence that he had. When Claudius was emperor, therefore Felix could not run the risk of upsetting the Jewish authorities. Right. Thirdly, Felix simply lacked the moral strength to do the right thing. He preferred compromise to righteousness, for he had already received the testimony which declared that Paul was innocent. And lastly, 
Felix was known for taking bribes. Perhaps he had hopes of lining his pockets with a huge bribe from Paul. He had heard in the trial about that large relief fund that Paul had brought with him to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So instead of setting Paul free, Felix adjoined the proceedings. He said, when Lysias, the commander, comes, I will decide your case. Mm -hmm. He then ordered the centurion to keep Paul under guard. But he ordered that Paul be given some freedom yeah. by allowing his friends to take care of his every need. Well, we now arrive at our text. It says several days later, uh -huh. Felix came with his wife, Drusilla. Mm -hmm. Listen to Paul as he spoke about faith in Christ Jesus. Now you understand that Drusilla mm -hmm. was a Jewess yes. who no doubt had forgotten about her Jewish beliefs. Mm -hmm. She had hung around the temple. She had knowledge of God. Yes. She had heard about the coming Messiah. Right. Perhaps she had even heard about the crucifixion, the resurrection of Jesus. Yes. She was no stranger to the ways of God. Right, right. She was no stranger mm -hmm. to the laws of Moses wow. and the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. Perhaps that's why Felix knew so much about the way. But Drew chose to live in the palace with Felix because she wanted power. Mm -hmm. She wanted prestige. She wanted praise of being someone who was better than anyone else. She chose the chariots of the palace, the clothing of a queen, the jewels of an earthly crown. She chose the praise of the people. She knew that her lifestyle was wrong. She knew according to to Old Testament law that she was living a life of sin. Well. But she refused to take on the robes of righteousness and receive the crown that God had for her. Right. Many times, my brothers and sisters, we would rather live in the palace all right. yeah. with all the prestige, yeah. with all the power, than just being who we are. You know, a lot of us put on airs to be who we were never meant to be. Somebody ought to help me preach this. Well, according to the record, Paul started to preach. Perhaps, perhaps he took his text from the book of Romans. He could have even taken it from our Sunday school lesson. Yes, For he preached about righteousness. righteousness. Preached about temperance. Wow. Preached about the judgment to come. Well, well. And as Paul preached, Felix listened attentively. Soon that curt smile started to fade from Felix's face. Wow. But you know, Paul did not stop but he kept on, he kept on preaching. My brothers and sisters, real preaching will affect you. I'm talking about not jabroni preaching. I'm talking about real preaching will affect you. It has been said well that the gospel is like a two-edged sword. It cuts left. Somebody know it cuts it cuts right. You understand the gospel has various effects on various people. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Reverend E.L. McKinney said will make Fatty mad. 
It'll make Annie glad. Are y'all going to help me? It'll make some people shout, but it'll also make some folks pout. The record tells us that Felix was moved, impacted by the preaching of the gospel by Paul. Well, something started happening. Felix, who had always been in control, who had always had things well in hand, he started to tremble. He started to shake. He started to quiver. He started to move. Felix heard God's word being preached. It had a strange effect on him, for he trembled. He did not deny what Paul preached. Neither did he outright reject it. He did not laugh. He did not sneer. He did not cry. He just trembled. He trembled and he trembled. He trembled with conviction. For God has spoken to his soul. Sin had found him out. Yet he trembled. Every now and then, my brothers and sisters, something ought to move us. Can I get a witness? Every now and then, something ought to shake us up. I don't know how you feel about but I agree with the old report. I wouldn't have a religion that I couldn't feel. I couldn't feel it sometimes. So the preaching of Paul began to shake Felix up. It started to have an impact on Governor Felix. I wonder today when was the last time that you had a spiritual shake up? When was the last time you forgot about who was sent beside you and you just let go and then let go. Felix started to tremble. That reminds me of the song that asked the question, were you there when they crucified, crucified my Lord? The songwriter says, sometimes it causes me to tremble. Sometimes it causes me to shed some tears. Every now and then, the Spirit of God gets all over me. And when that happens, I can't help but lift my hands. I can't help but pat my feet. I can't help but stand up, shout the glory of God. Yes, when God and the Spirit get all over you, you just can't hold your peace. Do I have a witness? Well, you would have thought that when Paul opened the doors of the church, Felix, he would have come. But I heard, I said, I heard, I heard Felix say, that's enough for right now. You go on, go on and leave. When I find it, find it convenient, I will send for you. Yes, Felix assumed that he would be around until tomorrow. My brothers and sisters, how tragic it is that Felix 
falls in the same boat with King Agrippa. You remember how later when Paul preached unto King Agrippa, he said, Paul, now almost has persuaded me. Almost. Somebody need to know. Almost is not good enough. Ain't God all right? Felix threw up his hand. Felix raised the stop sign. Yes, many times we raise the stop sign thinking that we got until tomorrow. I submit to you today that the danger of tomorrow is tomorrow comes with a large question mark. Although we are alive now, although we are well right now, we do not know whether we will see tomorrow or not. You may have a reasonable porch of health and strength today, but you just don't know what lies ahead on tomorrow. Tomorrow is not dependable. Tomorrow may show up and then it may not. I may see it, then I may not feel it. Waited and put off, decided until another day. He put off what so many people do. They put off their decision to follow God, to follow God today. Well, I gotta get out of here. Yes, I feel my help here. Yes, don't put off today. For tomorrow, yes, ain't God all right? Don't put off, put off today for tomorrow. Come here, Dottie Rambo. What do you have to say about it? Dottie would say, yesterday is gone. Tomorrow may never be mine. So for my sake, Lord, help me to take one day, one day, one day at a time. Yes, you got a prayer to pray. You ought to pray it today. You got a sermon to preach. You ought to preach it today. You got a soul to sing. You ought to sing it today. Tomorrow is not promised. Thank God all right today. Today is the day. Yes. Today is the day. Yes. There are some things that you need to do. There are some things we need to do. And we need to do it right now. There are some things. Yes. When I lay down at night, I want to say, if I don't wake up, in the morning, everything, anybody know, if I don't wake up, everything, everything is all right, you ought to be able to say, yes, if I die, before I wake, I pray, I pray the Lord, my soul to take, ain't he all right, ain't he all right, do you know him? Say yes. Do you know him? Don't wait. But today, yes. Today, somebody will say today. Today, I give you my life. Today, I give you my heart. Today, I give you the praise. I can't wait on until tomorrow. I'm going to shout. I'm going to shout right now. Don't wait till the victory is over. Shout. Come on, shout. Shout.
right now. Come on, let's give him some praise. Don't wait till tomorrow. Praise him. Come on, Melkor. Praise him. Praise him right now. He's been too good. He's been too good. Anybody know he's been good? Anybody know he's been good? Did he wake you up this morning? Good, good, good. So good. So good. So good. Yeah. He's so good. Get 
Some sweet day we're going over Amen. and all the beauties there to share. Just a little while to stay here. Just a little while to wait. Just a little while to labor in that path that's always straight. Come on, let's stand as we prepare to leave this place. Father God, as we conclude this celebration of praise. Yes. We thank you for all that we've experienced here through the Holy Spirit today. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to make whatever decisions that we made. And if there are those who listen to us to still make need to make decisions, yes. let us not put off until to tomorrow well, what we can do Amen. today. Amen. Father God, we love you. We ask you to forgive us of our sins, anything we've said or done contrary to your word. Forgive us right now. Father God, we again pray for all those who stand in danger, whether it's in this country in the path of a storm, those who are 
in Afghanistan that are trying to get out. Amen. Father God, watch over all of us. Yes. Keep us safe from all hurt, harm, or danger. Yes. Again, we pray much that you would protect our children. Yes. Another child shot down yes. in our streets of Memphis this week. Protect us. COVID running wild and people still not being vaccinated. Protect us. Might all hurt harm or danger. Father, we thank you for this musician that you sent by here today. Father God, touch his hands and touch his fingers, Father. Father God, he already got the skills. Just touch him more. I pray for more in his life. Father God, bless all of us. And now may the grace of God, love and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. It is in the name of Jesus and all of God's people said amen, 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 amen. Let the church say amen. You just play that.